everybody. My name is Craig Weaver and welcome to another edition of the Audio Analyst. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I hope you are all safe and well and that you won't mind me enjoying this martini while we go on the promised video tour of my reference system. So, first of all, digital is served up by my dedicated Dell desktop computer running Windows 10 installed on a 150 gigabyte Samsung Evo Pro solid state drive um, a dual threaded quad core uh, 3.1 gigahertz Intel i5 with 16 gig of RAM and it's all optimized using Fidelizer Pro 8. Uh, I currently use the latest versions of Rune, J River Media Center, Ottervana, or Kobuz for music management and playback. My current reference stack is the relatively new and remarkably natural Mola Mola Tembaki. Um, it supports pulse code modulation up to 384 kilohertz at 32-bit uh, and direct stream digital up to quad rate. It uses a pair of mono DACs. Uh, it eschews PCM entirely and instead uses pulse wave modulation. PWM is a special case of pulse density modulation, more commonly called one bit or bitstream, is what you'd recognize. Files are delivered from my server over either uh, an audience front row premium USB cable, which is fabulous, or uh, delivered as a rune or to a rune endpoint over my uh, uh, home network. My review of uh, this remarkable Tembaki DAC is almost done, uh, and it will appear and enjoy the music soon, so keep an eye out for that. Um, LPs are transcribed by the groundbreaking Kronos Sparta turntable. Um, it's a, a suspended design that uses contra-rotation uh, two platters uh, to prevent uh, the suspension from loading and, and storing the platter's rotational torsional forces. This allows for much richer tonal color, greatly improved clarity, um, focus, detail, and it's been my reference for the past four years now. Musical resolution with this turntable, inner detail, microdynamic expression, they're, they're taken to new heights with this table. Uh, and um, for the past six months now, uh, I've enjoyed even greater control and refinement uh, since uh, I implemented the uh, optional uh, Sparta supercapacitor power supply. The arm is the Kronos Helena, or Helena, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a double-walled, high-modulus carbon fiber composite design using unidirectional fiber structure. Um, it's low-hung counterweight mass and uh, an exceptionally precise um, um, spherical ball and cup uh, unipivot design afford a brilliantly simple and an extremely effective pivot system. I mean, it's spectacular. My cartridge is the handmade Itsuro Gold Moving Coil cartridge. Um, the housing is fashioned from a, a, a super rigid aluminum based metal alloy, uh, which is then finished with traditional Japanese handcrafted techniques, including Yurushi, which is the, white, uh, the whitish rubber like um, tree sap lacquering process, uh, and then a layer of 24 gold uh, leaf foil. I mean, it's roughly one to two ten thousandths of a millimeter thick. Uh, this amazing transducer has been my reference for the past year now. My Phono stage is the remarkable Dynamic Sounds Associates Phono 2, which I, I have never reviewed. Uh, though I did review its predecessor, the Phono 1, the Phono 2 is an accomplished performer and a leader in its class with neutral, rich tonality, uh, intoxicating speed, uh, near faultless extension at both extremes, um, all the while giving you an extremely dynamic, clean, and superbly transparent view into any LP you play, you, you feed the thing. It's fabulous. Uh, for the past two years, my reference line stage has been the amazing AudioNet Pre G2. Um, AudioNet's flagship line stage until the recent introduction of their Lighthouse product, the Stern line stage. Driving the AudioNet Max monoblocks with their remarkable bandpass of 0 Hz DC to 500 kilohertz. Uh, this combination represents one of the highest ratios of performance to price I've yet encountered, exemplifying the role of the proverbial giant killer if anything does. Uh, there aren't any real giant killers, but 
Um, AudioNet was founded in 1994 and uh, they began designing and building extremely sensitive electronics for the medical world. Um, those kinds of devices must necessarily be able to differentiate minute changes and accurately amplify those changes uh, of, in, in extremely low amplitude signals. Um, so it's easy to, to understand AudioNet's claim that their products have consistently measured better than their competitors. And if you go out and look, you'll you'll see the numbers speak for themselves. Um, and, and seriously, one listen, and you can readily hear that they are building extremely refined, archetypical machines. Um, with nearly five decades in and around this industry, I, I've run across nothing at, uh, or even reasonably near their price points that can begin to compete with, let alone match them, for their uh, unparalleled combination of clarity with expressiveness, focus with body, resolution with bloom, delicacy with power, and especially uh, detail with texture. It's fabulous. My current speakers are the Von Schweikert VR55 Actives, and they have been my reference since their arrival in 2015. Uh, they made their debut at the November 2014 Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and in fact, uh, the pair you see behind me, mine, are the very models that were displayed at that show. The VR55 Actives have more than just the ability to vanish from the listening room, revealing only the musical experience. They deliver music in a resolute, yet wholly organic manner. Um, what makes this speaker so alluring, and, and such a value actually, is the way it is able to synergize its innovative inner cabinet technology, its class leading resolution, and crystalline transparency, tonal accuracy, top to bottom coherence, and complete room integration. They revealed nothing but vibrant and indisputable musical soul when they get a chance to play. It's fabulous. Every time I step up the components in front of them, as with the arrival of the AudioNet Stern line stage and Heisenberg monoblocks, or the recent arrival of the SS CPS for my Sparta, damned if the 55s didn't show me that they had more to give than they had already revealed. Um, the VR55 Active was a landmark product when it was released, and it is still an overachieving performer in today's market. That said, um, what VSA has accomplished with their new Ultra line of products over the past four years has spurred me to trade in my 55s on a pair of Ultra 9s in that gorgeous red uh, which I reviewed for and appeared on the cover of the October 2019 issue of the Absolute Sound. It was issue 298 and they'll be here any day now. Expect a full video report on them once they are in place, okay? It's gonna be fun. Um, system support is handled by the Grand Prix Audio Monaco Isolation System, which includes the four shelf uh, equipment stand uh, with their formula isolation shelves and Apex uh, carbon composite nitride ball footers, as well as a pair of their uh, Monaco amplifier stands. I've also been fortunate enough to be able to install a full set of the absolutely game-changing isolation components, the Critical Mass System Center Stage 2 footers. Guys, I, I've been experimenting, experimenting with and playing with footers and, and isolation systems since those things very genesis back in the summer of uh, 1983, with, uh, which saw the introduction of both the Sorbethane-footed uh, uh, Mission Isoplat and now my good friend Steve McCormick's machined aluminum Mod Squad tiptoes. Um, but the critical mass system center stage two is something altogether unique. Um, no other footers, cones, or, or any other isolation devices in my entire audio journey can even compare to what these magic pucks accomplish. They are staggering. They are they redefine the category. Uh, cabling comes from one of two uh, major companies. I have full looms from both. Uh, first, I've been using Sergei Timachev's Stealth cables uh, since shortly after meeting him at CES 2003 in Vegas. Um, what I've fallen for with the Stealth Helios Phono cable, the Sakura Interconnects, and the Dream V14 speaker cables is simply their more faithful representation of body, 
their amazing sense of tranquil relaxation while, while delivering full detail and resolution. Um, and, and it's a faultless natural resolution. Um, that combined with their enhanced and accurate spatial abilities, all of this synergizes into one of the most, if not the most extraordinarily lifelike result I've yet experienced from any Luma cables. They're pricey, but oh my god, are they good. Uh, and while still costly, uh, the latest front row series of cables from Audience, the digital uh, interconnects and loudspeaker cables uh, and power cords, uh, represents a new pinnacle of achievement from a, a, a very distinguished established product line uh, and by no small degree. In fact, every power cable I'm using uh, these days uh, in my system is uh, one of these superb front row models. Make no mistake about it, these cables are world class. They offer deep articulate base, un unfaltering speed, um, defined articulate pitch, and they have an exceptional tonal focus with the ability to present body and bloom that even earlier audience cables were probably less capable of doing. These are fabulous cables. Fabulous cables. Power for my components <clears throat> in the listening room. I've got a fully dedicated 20 amp run for the amplifiers, another fully dedicated 15 amp run for all the sources. Um, every other device in the room, um, uh, computers, printers, lamps, TVs, they're all on a separate uh, system. I also use the remarkable audience and depth response AR12 TSOX passive conditioner to feed all the components. With it in play, everything grew up appreciably more uh, organic sounding. Everything was less granular, was more coherent and cohesive, and it was all rendered with an enhanced sense of space that was remarkable. Even, even background silence uh, was quieter. Uh, mids had quieter, or mids had creamier texture and, and were more fleshed out. Um, there was a greater body and bloom, and base detail and definition were also uh, noticeably improved. It's remarkable. I also use a pair of Quantum Symphony Pros. Um, also passive devices, uh, devices from the now defunct Quantum QRT company. <clears throat> that company um, and their technology was sold to Nordost, who makes variations on this product today. Uh, but with these symphonies in pro, and they 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 compound. One is good, two is better, three. I, I tried three and four, and it didn't make a significant difference, so I have two. <clears throat> but with them in play, almost every aspect of the system presentation is noticeably better. The enrichments it affords to the character of the acoustic of the venue, the apparent noise floor, micro and macro dynamic uh, events, truth of timbre, especially through the upper mids, overall clarity, focus, and the completely natural flow of the musical event. They're just captivating. I simply can't take them out of the system. Room treatments here include uh, the Room Tunes corner tunes, uh, up in the corners. I have a pair of Echo Tunes, uh, one each, at the tweeter's primary reflection point on the ceiling. And uh, I have a pair of the stunningly effective Shakti uh, Innovations holographs. Off to the sides, I have two six-foot-tall by four-foot-wide panels of RLX Studio Foam wedgies um, that act as diffraction absorption panels uh, at the first sidewall reflection point of the speakers. Overall, my, my, my music room here, uh, with cinder block wall and a poured cement slab floor, it occupies the north end of the west half of my basement in a room that is 45 feet long by 13 feet wide uh, and seven, seven feet two inches tall. Um, I have two different sized doorways um, that are asymmetrically placed and vent into the other half of the basement, a second equally sized and shaped room, and, and those two doorways clearly are acting as aperiodic vents. The tweeters of my speakers are centered uh, 1 foot 10 inches from the side walls and 7 feet from the wall behind them with a toe-in of about 8 degrees. Uh, the prime listening area is centered roughly 10 feet back from the um, plane of the tweeters. And uh, I gotta tell you, they, a lot of industry people have been here. Um, visiting industry leaders, uh, including some major speaker and amplifier designers from the US and Scandinavian powerhouses, 
distributors and manufacturers representatives as well as other writers and reviewers and, and just buddies who come to listen have all commented on how remarkably well integrated my room is sonically I mean, the room just doesn't seem to exhibit any loading I'm very fortunate it's a great room now if you go back uh, and look up and add up uh, the prices of all the items I've just shown you uh, you're probably in for some sticker shock um, <laughs> Keep in mind, I didn't always have an audio system that cost more than my house. Uh, in my college days, I had a Sherwood receiver, a TF cassette deck, a VIC turntable with a Stanton cartridge, a pair of Advent Largers with the utility cabinets, you know, average stuff. But today, when you sit in my chair, facing that way, and get to hear the magic this system recreates, you may begin to understand how I've come over the past 50 years of my journey to this point where the magic it makes more than justifies the investment. I mean, the system just didn't fall from the sky as one coherent thing. It, it represents the accumulation of years of experience and understanding and sensibilities to put together a system that doesn't just play back a recording. It makes musical magic. And guys, I'm talking about the magic, the, the utter and inexplicable suspension of disbelief that can occur when all the conditions are right, when that perfect storm of electronics, speakers, cabling, software, and room setup all align. That, that most miraculous of times when you are permitted to completely forget that what you are listening to is a recreation, a, a reconstructed sonic event when you can become so completely transfixed by an entirely fabricated deception that, that, that you're unaware that the time and space of the event unfolding before you is merely an auditory illusion generated by a complex reconstruction engine, a conglomeration of electromechanical devices. It can be a transforming occurrence, transporting you through time and space to, to witness the sensations, the the feelings, even the emotions that the artists in play worked so hard to convey and an experience that the production crew and recording engineers toiled so hard to accurately capture uh, on these recordings we used to travel back to the event. Well, there you have it. Uh, the reason I wanted to familiarize you with uh, my reference rig and, and try to communicate to you just how remarkable an experience it is to sit in my chair is so that as we move forward and and talk more and more about other equipment or other music uh, that I'm going to, to uh, talk about and, and share with you. They have some sense of just how remarkable a system I use uh, to reveal the strengths and weaknesses of these other gear and, and recordings that, that will be under my examination here, okay? Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying these conversations. I really can't thank you enough for coming by and, and taking some time with me. So in closing, I would like to toast to you, uh, to your health and safety, and wish you all uh, the greatest musical experiences that you can have, some live experiences, recorded experiences, all of them. Um, to you, 